So taking us back to the topic of discussion today, uh, Dr. Padma, we wanted to talk, bring the context of ID in terms of the current century that we are in. And when we talk about the 21st century, there is an initial era where communicable diseases predominantly dominated every aspect of healthcare research, delivery, everything. This is the 60s and 50s we are talking about. But the last couple of decades, uh, I'm sure you would agree, we've seen a shift from communicable diseases to NCD focus in all aspects. Can we talk about the focus? Have we lost focus or where do we see? That's a very good uh, question, Shravani. In fact, uh, this is one of the first few things we um, uh, talk about or discuss during our lectures in infectious disease epidemiology. Now, I want to draw your attention to um, the large global study which being done um, by the Institute of Health Metrics. It's called Global Burden of Disease Study. I think everybody in healthcare setting should just go and look at the website and then kind of understand what's happening with the global burden of disease. Now, one of the unique things about this uh, Global Burden of Disease Study is that they get data from all over the world, from all countries. And so we can say that it's actually one of the credible sources of data. Now, coming back to the data itself, and there are two fantastic slides which compare the global burden of disease from 1990 to uh, 2017. If you look at these two slides, you'll see the top 10 causes of death. In this top 10 causes of death in 1990s, like you rightly said, Shravani, in 1990s, more than 8 out of 10 were infectious disease causes of deaths. Whereas if you cut down to 2017, you will see the infectious disease causes of deaths have come down from 8 to 4. There have been only 4. Now, what, who are the rest of the 6 are all non-communicable diseases, as you would rightly predict, including uh, cancer, road traffic accidents, Alzheimer's, you know, all of the other, uh, uh, and of course, cardiovascular diseases and stroke, which form the number one and number three. So you, as you rightly said, we are moving towards a shift in the epidemiology. We are seeing a mix of um, um, non-communicable and communicable diseases. And if you see the spread of this communicable and non-communicable diseases in countries, you can see that in well-developed countries, or affluent countries like US, UK, Canada, Australia, the non-communicable diseases have been uh, dominating for the last 30 to 40 years. Whereas countries like India, which we call it as emerging nations like India, Indonesia, you know, Philippines, those are the countries which have a unique mix where they have the burden of both communicable and non-communicable diseases. Now, having said this, that, uh, you know, the communicable disease and non-communicable disease are, are only focused in emerging nations and not threatening uh, highly developed countries. You can see that Corona uh, COVID-19 situation has turned the tables upside down. And you can see one of the, uh, the, more, the most affected countries at this stage are uh, after China, it will be Spain, Italy, France, and Germany and the United States, actually. All of yeah. these countries were highly developed countries. And this yeah. is an interesting observation to see that this emerging infections like Corona, COVID-19 or Corona, or SARS or MERS or Ebola, they don't have boundaries. And there are several reasons for that. And we can you know, talk about this in a separate lecture. But yeah. to summarize your uh, answer to your question, yes, it's um, uh, infectious diseases epidemiology is changing. Uh, a lot of uh, countries are struggling with um, both infectious diseases and uh, communicable diseases or infectious diseases and non-communicable diseases. But as you can see, there are emerging infections or re-emerging infections which threaten uh, all countries irrespective of their affluence or social status. Yeah, I think that raises an important question going back to my comment, Dr. Padma, that uh, you brought in the right aspect of differentiating the emerging nations, how they handle 
people and what they are handling and what the developed countries, so-called so-called developed countries, have been focusing on. Uh, that, that's why I wanted the slide to be called a lost focus because uh, we we did do a great amount of research and we've come a long way in terms of eradicating a lot of the diseases and handling a lot of diseases, vaccinating a lot of our population. Uh, but we've been seeing a trend in the last few, uh, let's say, a decade, at least the last decade, if you see, there have been emerging new strains of these diseases, the same diseases that we fought earlier, and newer, uh, you know, viruses like Corona we're talking about, and I can go back and list all of them, we all know, be it the H1N1 or whatever it is. We've been seeing them re-emerge in a new format again and again every five years or ten years. Do you think there has been enough focus or enough weightage given uh, to the communicable disease spread and more so about the containment of them wherein the public health aspect of it comes do you think we have given enough focus onto it or have we been concentrating as an i'm not talking about any countries in specific here but globally have we all lost that concept uh, of you know probably uh, you know still keeping the focus on would you say that since you've been working in that area what do you have to say yeah so that's a very good question i think um uh, we can start from our Indian con context where I did my medicine and then I moved to Australia. Uh, you know, in India, there are about, um, you know, uh, nearly 2 million uh, tuberculosis cases and, uh, you know, several hundred thousand deaths due to tuberculosis. And, you know, it's actually the number one cause of infectious disease death in the world. Hmm. And uh, given that, you know, the huge spread of infectious diseases like TB, malaria, uh, you know, leprosy and other emerging infections like Nipah virus, H1N1, H5N1, all of this. You will be surprised if I tell you there are no expert, uh, there are no specialities in infectious disease in, in India. Okay. In fact, that is one of the main uh, foundation reasons for uh, University of New South Wales and Medvasti to come together to bridge that gap. So we have identified that gap about maybe, you know, almost uh, seven years ago when uh, Medvasti and University of New South Wales started engaging in discussions on how to bridge this gap and how to, uh, you know, cater to this huge demand of infectious diseases, specialists, you know, and public health uh, trained professionals. And that, that's how uh, the Fellowship in Infectious Diseases itself was, was born. And as you rightly pointed out, there is a dearth of infectious diseases uh, courses, which actually kind of cater to this uh, existing and emerging infections. And you can see that the, the principles behind containment, like uh, hand hygiene, social distancing, and then using the uh, epidemiological models and epidemic curves for containing is becoming more and more relevant today. And you can, uh, you know, well, very well read in newspapers in the last you know, a couple of months about, uh, you know, newspapers flashing epidemic curves and how many of our healthcare workers are trained in epidemic curves. And I can confidently say very little. So, and I think, so to, so to you know, to answer your question, there is a great dearth of, uh, uh, of training in infectious diseases um, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, indefinitely in countries like India, and then also in countries like uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, and then there's very few uh, faculties established to uh, cater to this demand. And I'm proud to um, to tell that Medvasti and UNSW have partnered in this initiative, and then uh, we have been uh, successfully catering to this uh, demand, and we have trained more than 500 to 600 infectious diseases specialists through the training programs. <laughs> 